Get live reports from the sidelines throughout our game. Follow Aaron Dugan on Twitter at AaronFox56. He looks like he's already got his play called. And they're not going to call a timeout. They're going to let him go at it. Ten seconds. Pick play. Got it! This is another Fox 56 Sports presentation of the Rivalry of the Week on MyTV WQMY. Brought to you by McCann School of Business and Technology and Blaze Alexander Dealerships. Phil Lockoff Gymnasium at Shikalima High School is starting to fill up in anticipation of tonight's District 4 Championship doubleheader. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Ide. Up first, girls double-A action between Central Columbia and Montoursville, and then we'll check out the boys triple-A championship as Shimokin will take on Milton. Joining me courtside for all tonight's title action, John Mandola from the Fox 56 Sports Show, and our own Aaron Dugan will join us shortly. And John, let's talk about these two teams right now. Central Columbia, meanwhile, uh, has a, a win over Montoursville this year. They're looking for a championship. They lost last year's championship to Mount, to Mount Carmel. They're led by Lindsey Carl, a very big center. Yeah, she is. Six foot is uh, the inside of two girls, a six footer and a five foot ten. Lindsey Carl averaging 15.7 points per game at 18 points, 15 rebounds against Wyo losing. And a big part of this Central Columbia team tonight. And we'll see if she could get going a little bit. Montoursville beat their nemesis, Mount Carmel, on this gymnasium floor just the other night. They're led by a thousand point scorer, Kirsten O'Malley. Well, O'Malley's one of those girls that could do it from a little bit everywhere. And, you know, Coach from Central Columbia knows Coach Burton knows he's got to try to slow her down or stop her then they'll have an opportunity to get the job done tonight as Montoursville starts for seniors. As I mentioned this is the rubber match of these two teams what do the coaches think of tonight's matchup our own Aaron Dugan had a chance to talk to both coaches before tonight's game. All right, thank you, Bob. Here with both head coaches. Coach Merton, we'll start with you. Last time you played this team you came out with the win. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage for you? Well, it, it starts all over again today. We routinely play Montoursville in some classic games. Always hard fought, always close scores uh, since I've been the head coach here. So I expect no difference today. Was it great at that time? Certainly uh, it was a, a challenge game that, that brought us up a little closer to the up, upper echelon of the league uh, with Montoursville and Mount Carmel. So uh, no doubt about it, it was an important win at that time, but today we start fresh. The team you know very well. What's it going to take exactly to shut them down? Well, good team overall. They got good pieces in good places. Uh, I think it all starts out with Kristen O'Malley. She's a five-tool girl, uh, not only individually skilled, but also a great girl at facilitating and making her teammates better. Uh, it's always a challenge to keep an eye on her, but, but you can't lose sight of her because she's a terrific player. Other than that, like I said, they have good pieces in all other places as well. So it, it's a total team effort that will be needed tonight to play with Montorzo. Thanks for your time and good luck. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll move on to Coach Heap. I'll ask you the same thing. Central Columbia, a team you know yeah. very well. What will it take to shut them down? Um, I think it's on the defense end, just limiting them to uh, one possession. Um, they get after it on the boards, and I think the one game that we lost to them down at their place, they uh, beat us up on the boards pretty bad. So, you know, just had, coming out with that intensity right off the bat and, uh, you know, controlling the boards, I think will ultimately lead for a win. Special team for you. It's a special year. What would it mean to these girls to come out with a district title tonight? Oh, it would mean mean the world to them. I mean, from day one, they put in the hard work. They want this. Uh, since since I got the job, they they told me that they were dedicated to winning a district championship. And you know, we're finally here. We got one more game, and you know, I think the fans are going to get their money's worth in this one. It's going to be a great game. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thank you. Okay, Bob. Back to you. Thank you, Aaron. There'll be a new champion crown tonight in girls class AA in District 4. Will it be Central Columbia or Montoursville? The starting lineups and the opening tip are on the way. You're watching a Fox 56 Sports presentation of the Rivalry of the Week on My TV WQMY. Brought to you by McCann School of Business and Technology and Blaze Alexander Dealerships. Welcome back live to Sunbury as we await tonight's Girls District 4 AA Basketball Championship between Central Columbia and Montoursville. Starters being announced on the floor as we speak, so that gives us a chance now to take a look at tonight's starting lineups. For the Blue Jays, who are 20-4 and four coming in, play in the Pennsylvania Heartland Conference Division 2. It's Carl, Knorr, McCracken, Merton, and Klingerman who will be your starting lineup. 
senior related team for Montoursville. O'Malley, Hall, Marciani, the sophomore, Folk, and Stein will ride on out the top five. John Mandola, two teams very, very similar. They have big people inside, girls that can handle the ball, and we should see a very good game. Yeah, I mean, we got some experienced players here, three seniors over on Central Columbia's side will start, four seniors on Montoursville's side. And, you know, you get some players here that can score 1,000 points. You know, one of them is Lindsey Carl. You know, Net didn't play her freshman year for Central Columbia. Three years for 1,000 points. Impressive in this day uh, to, to get that done and really has done a, a fabulous job this season. So Montoursville will be in the blue uniforms with the gold trim. They'll be the home team. The visitors are Central Columbia. They are in the white with the blue trim. So it'll be Carl and Stein who are ready to jump it up. And we are ready for tonight's District 4 AA Championship. And we are not. Referees are going to come in. The referees tonight, Steve Jacoby. Tony Dunkelberger and Corey Hauser out of District 4. And it will be the Blue Jays who have it. Nor with the ball, season 5'10", junior. Looks like a zone defense for Montoursville, John, early on. Well, Central Columbia, one of the things they want to do is limit turnovers and hit shots like that. Downtown three, Merton. That's her 50th on the year. She leads the team in three-pointers. She's the three-baller for Central Columbia, as Coach Merton says. Try to get it in to O'Malley on the cut. It goes off of Central's hands, and it will be Warrior ball underneath. First foul, the guys, Barciani, the sophomore, gets hit, and actually it's going to go out of bounds. Both teams like to take the, shoot the threes, but they also can pound the boards. Expect the game somewhere in the 40s. It will remain Warriors ball as the stingy defense from the Blue Jays early on. Yeah, one of the things that Coach Burton wants to do is try to see if he can contain Kirsten O'Malley in some form. So it comes back out to Marciani. The sophomore runs the show. She did not play the last time these two teams met. Inside Stein. Double pump. And Corzo's on the board. Created some space there after the rebound. and Got enough to get it high up the glass and in. Burton sets up in the one corner. She hit the three last time Central had the ball. Montoursville very aware of that right now. Now she'll switch sides. They pound it in low to McCracken, and she's fouled, and she'll go for two shots. Allison McCracken, a five foot eight senior, averaging nine points per game. Foul goes on Hall, her first. So it'll be McCracken at the line. Second team, all division two of the P-Hack, and she hits the second one. And a man defense from the Blue Jays. Uh, Torsville trying to be patient. Central Columbia, of course, right now they want to keep things very tight early on in this game. O'Malley, step back, no good. Blue Jays won the last meeting January 30th, 45 to 39. That was over at their place. And as I mentioned, though, Marciani, the sophomore, did not play. Both teams looking for 
district title. Central lost last year to Mount Carmel in this game. Montoursville, first time since year 2000 since they've been in this final, and it will remain Blue Jay ball underneath. Coach Martin talked a lot about keeping their composure so important when you're taking on a team like Montoursville. They're so talented. You don't want your emotions to get the best of you, so make sure you're making good decisions. Jump ball goes to the Warriors. Down three now. Back of the rim for Hall. And Noir will bring it up court. Couple long balls so far for Montours will not able to connect. Opportunity here to go up 7-2. You'd love to if you're Coach Merton. Central trailed while losing who they beat the other night to get here. And then they came on to, to beat the Lady Rams 58-45. Well, there's two opportunities, Bob, for Central. You don't even get a look at the basket. You fumble the ball away. You know, you want to at least get your looks to try to see if something goes in. O'Malley trying to get the corner, and she's going to get it and get a foul called on Central. Foul went against Noor, her first. going be a travel on the floor as Folk trying to take it in. Merton again downtown. Nails it, two threes for Madeline Merton. <laughs> She's coming down telling her teammates, I don't even know how that went in. She just literally threw that one up, but nice to get two threes out of her. So Montoursville looking for their first basket in almost three minutes. They scored at the seven minute mark. Drilled by one, now they're down six to a very confident Blue Jay team. O'Malley. Nice step in, a little six-footer, good. Kirsten O'Malley really leads his team offensively, and just an overall very good basketball player, five-foot-eight senior. And there's a foul on the floor. Should be. Yep, 347. Torresville down four, Central Columbia with the early lead here on my TV. And we are back in Chickalini. The girls district four double A championship on the line. Central John with a four point lead. Got a big points right there, but you know, the, so far I think the story is the Blue Jays defense and the outside shooting of Burton. Yeah, they really seem to be holding Montoursville at bay there. Inside, McCracken no good. Big rebound by Marissa Folk. Well, she's a toughie on the inside for Montoursville, that's for sure. Doesn't score a lot, but she's a, definitely a presence for the Lady Warriors. O'Malley fouled as she went around. Might be against Taylor Knorr again if that is her second. And that's a that could be a big loss. Let's see what Coach Merton wants to do because Knorr held O'Malley in check last time they played. Only eight points for O'Malley. So they're going to have to bring her out. They're, that's their toughest defender. Yeah, now the uh, Central brings in Ellie McDaniel. She's just 5 2. Let's see what defense there. Looks like they went to a zone, John. Big hands by Merton.
Pumping it inside, Carl double team quickly. Torsville still in that kind of a 2-3 look, but sometimes Matt goes into 3-2 defense. O'Malley coming out on Merton. Carl, no good. Well, nobody there to rebound for Central Columbia. Only one opportunity. Trying to get it to get inside Bassett in the game. Marlene Bassett for Montoursville, number 22. Bassett, very tall. Another big presence for Montoursville on the inside, just a little different than what you're getting from Marissa Folk. Knocked away, no backcourt. Was touched. Blue Jays have it. They're trying to push it a little bit. There's Burton again. Well, the one thing that happened, number 43 on the bench, Taylor Knorr. You're missing a girl who can play various positions. Big rebounds inside, but Kraken lays it up and in. Torsville wanted over the back. They didn't get the call. Central Columbia just kept staying with it. Central back goes into the man, the man. Trying to look for some spacing. O'Malley keeps trying to take that corner, John, on both sides of the court. Well, one of the things that, that worried Coach Burton was, you know, they're playing tight man to man. They didn't want to sag their defense too much and worried about the guards driving in, but there hasn't been much penetration. They're playing great defense. Coming in inside McCracken. Carl, two easy layups missed so far. She's still looking for her first points. Now Matoras looking to cut into the six point lead before the first quarter ends. Block, no, gonna call foul underneath against Carl. And nice job by Bassett, another tall girl in there. I see Carl kind of lost her for a second. Didn't get her body into her, and then she already had a quick catch and shot. So this is the sophomore who's, this is the first one. Nice Arkin shot, and she gets that one to go her second. Blue Jays trying to go quickly, blocked away by the sophomore. O'Malley, one on two, lays it up and in. Well, O'Malley showing her versatility and athletic ability there, able to come right down and drive it when bodies are around her. Three in a row for Montoursville, down just three right now. Here's that composure right now from Central as Montoursville's fought back. Two turnovers by Central in the last 30 seconds. They're gonna have to get it up. Half court, they're not gonna count. So a late surge by Montoursville has the Warriors down three to Central Columbia. It's the District 4 AA Championship. Watching a Fox 56 Sports presentation of the Rivalry of the Week on My TV WQMY. Brought to you by McCann School of Business and Technology and Blaze Alexander Dealerships. Having a good time here tonight? Yeah! yeah great. So tell me about your student before. section. You guys have a theme. I see like a mullet. I see a, a king. I don't know what's going on here. Do you have a yeah. theme? We're vintage Montoursville and we're Big Mitch and the Funky Bunch. Woo! <laughs> and what's your name? Uh, Tim Ungard. Are you considered, you know, the king of the group here? Uh, I would consider myself the leader. I'm a motivational leader of this group. Motivational leader. And you can't see the haters with the hater blockers, right? Hater blockers, that's right. Hater blockers are on, Bob. 
Very good, Aaron. Uh, next time, I'll have to bring my suit down. You know, I'm the prince. You're the prince. All right. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> so Central Columbia leads by three. Impressions of the first quarter, John? Well, I thought Montoursville started slow. Central started well. And then Montoursville finished strong. And Central had a couple of boo-boos, a bunch of turnovers. That was something that Coach Merton didn't want. You know, limit those turnovers. Very important. Good hands by Central Columbia right now. Stop and pop, no good by Marciani. Up quickly looking for Carl. And it goes off of her hands, trying to get it down low to Lindsey Carl, the senior. So Central Columbia was in this game last year. Montoursville, they haven't been in it since 2000. Some of these girls were just in diapers then. Who has, who has the advantage? Well, I, I think it's pretty even. You have to probably give a little edge because Central's beat Montoursville three of the last four. But once again, a great move over there yeah, from O'Malley. O'Malley. That's why she's the leading scorer. I think sometimes coming down to earth after you knock off a team like Mount Carmel, you got to be ready to play. Sometimes that gives you momentum. Sometimes you, you're overhyped. But I think Montours was ready tonight. That one was off by Merton. She hit her first two. If she's behind the arc, she's good. Put her in front of it. Yeah. She might. She misses. O'Malley, downtown three, no good. Top front of the rim. Let's see what Taylor Knorr can do here for Central because, again, Coach Burton said she could play any position on the court for you. She's kind of like a, a power forward out there at the point, but she can really do so much. Very versatile player. Trying to get into McCracken. She's been on that high post all night, number 30. A Carl comes up there. Montoursville still set in that kind of matchup zone. There were no shot clock. Blocked away by Bassett. Nor says, we'll have none of that. Takes her right back. <laughs> One side of fans to the other as soon as the steal happened from Nor. So this is one of those tight affairs at 10-9. Central fans trying to get their team back into it. They need a little instant offense, though. Carl still looking for her first basket. Nice pump fake. And lays it in. Just add hot water to that. There's your instant O. Central's kind of like the team no one talked about all year, even though they were in the final. All the talk in Division II of the Heartland was Montcarmo, Montoursville. Bassett inside, no good. And all the talk was how much Central should have been the two seed, and it should have been Montcarmo and Montoursville in this game. Central probably feels that, like we disrespect that a, a little bit. A little bit, but they, they still have to win this game. And these are two very good basketball teams. Have a foul. Maybe they like it that way, too. Here's the replay. I see the body there as Central Columbia has Lindsey Carl get into her a little bit. Four team fouls now for them. I heard right. That might have been on Carl. That's her second. If that is, that's a big... That's two big ones, two big girls for Central in foul trouble already. Almost another one by Carl, no call. Well, that's a gutsy effort by her, but she did get all ball, though so a nice job from Carl. They're just li Central limited with that three-pointer. It seems like it's just Burton and Norwalk. That she did. So Montoursville trailing by three. Central still going to play that man to man. That's, let's see if they try to get it down low to Bassett or take it into Carl with two fouls. All right, now they got a little bit of a matchup here. O'Malley on a much smaller defender. Nor takes it away. Hoop of the harm. Go to the basket for a three-point play. I don't know what. 
So here's Gore coming in. And one. So with that, when they come back, Central extends their lead with 344 in the half. Welcome back. We are at Chickalimmy High School. 343 remaining in the half. It is Central Columbia who's extended their lead now to five, biggest of the game. Nor at the line, misses with a huge offensive rebound. Downtown for McDaniel. McCracken gets fouled underneath the Blue Jays hustling. Well, Blue Jays right now feeling it, getting inside, trying to go up against a couple of those trees on the inside for Montoursville and drawing a little contact. So Allison McCracken, the senior, goes to the line. She's one for one on the night. Make that one for two now. Marissa Folk, number 24, back in for the Warriors. And Taylor Knorr, number 43, back in for about Central Columbia with two fouls. And the first, second one by McCracken was good. See what Kirsten O'Malley can create right now for the Warriors. See if they can draw a little contact. Central playing some tight, tight defense. As Montoursville looking for their first basket in three minutes, John. Yeah, McDaniel's playing some nice D over here for Central. 5-0 run for the Blue Jays. Tough man-to-man -man from Central all night long. Really a good job on the inside by the Blue Jays. Fight underneath. Still battling is Folk, and she finally gets it in. Boy, tough matchup to go against those two, Bassett and Folk. Really creating some pressure. You better box out if you're Central Columbia. Now we got to travel. Change their pivot foot. So, big crowd already. Crowd still filing in for our next game with Shimokin and Milton, boys AAA title. Montorzel trying to get two baskets in a row. On the floor as Folk went to the basket, they're gonna call it out front and it's gonna go against McCracken, her first. Very rarely in high school you'll see an N1. You know, a lot of these fouls are on the floor. College, much different. So, official made the call. Montours will have an opportunity here. Fifth foul, five fouls actually on both teams. O'Malley bumped a little bit. No foul call. They'll let them play here in the first half. Blue Jays content now to play a little keep away. Up four. Waste, get some clock off. Klingerman had a, a chance. And they're going to call back court as McDaniel ran it down. Coach Burton said she didn't have control when she went over. Trying to go to the hole most of the night. She has six points and is going to be called for a travel. Oh, uh, back comes Burton. See if she can light up a three here with a four point advantage for Central. Let's see if they try to stay with one possession here, Bob. The 
McCracken to Carl. Nice job by McCracken to find Lindsey Carl. Carl had a bad angle on that, but still was able to use the glass. That was impressive. Another big turnover. Montoursville's piling them up here in the first half. Minute to play, half number one. District four, double A championship, two in a row. That what a is, six footer. That is money right there for Lindsey Carl, the bread and butter of the central team. They love the half court offense. And right now that's working for the Blue Jays. Big eight point advantage. Warriors unable to get easy baskets and unable to hold on to the ball. And they're going to have a foul underneath against McCracken. And I think that might be two for her as well. They got one or two to give. That one, I believe, is on the floor. So the ball will be underneath. You know, that's your sixth team foul. O'Malley in the corner. Didn't follow her shot. She would have got it right back. 30 seconds remaining. Let's see if they're going to go for one. Coach Burton calls out the play in his third season with Central. Go right back to Carl at the top of the key to make a quick move here. Burton hearing the crowd yell the time. O'Malley has, has time if she wants. Throws up a little 15-footer in front of the rim, and that will do it. Another late surge, this time by Central Columbia, and they extend their lead over Montoursville to 8, 19 to 11. When we come back, we'll preview the boys game with Aaron Dugan, and then we'll have highlights and stats for the first half. It's the District 4 AA Girls Championship on my TV. And welcome back to Phil Luckup Gymnasium at Shikalami High School. This is game one of two for a double hit, double header here on my TV, WQMY. You're watching the girls game first, Central Columbia, Montoursville. Coming up next will be the boys game, Milton and Shimokin. And joining me now is the head coach from Milton, Gene Bruno. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. All right, so this is going to be the fourth time that you're playing this season. Shimokin took the first one. You won the last two. What went right for you in those last two games? Well, I think what we were able to do the first time we played them, they come out and really shot the ball very well. And uh, what we were able to do the last two times was get out in the passing lane and force them back door a little bit so they had to catch and shoot. Um, they're a very good shooting team. They're lethal. My big concern is if they come out of the locker room early in the first quarter and catch fire, we could be in some trouble. So we have to be really attuned to our defense and make sure that we're where we need to be and not allow them to run from us. Hopefully keep the game close and uh, at the end it could be anybody's game. Your team's been on kind of an uphill trajectory this whole season, been getting better. How have you seen them improve throughout the season? Uh, basically, we just stay positive. We're a very unselfish team. We distribute the ball on any given night to who, where if we find a weakness, something we can expose, we try to do that. Uh, kids don't really care about who gets the baskets, who scores. Our point guard had a thousand, hit his thousands point the other night. He only had two points in the game. He could have cared less. He was just glad we got the win over Jersey Shore and we're here tonight. And last question, it's a team that you know very, very well. What would you say is the number one key to shutting them down tonight? being in those passing lanes and not allow them to face the basket. If they get their feet planted, uh, right Bree, Sebasovic, Moyer, they'll, they'll all splash the three. And that's, we got to stop that three, force them back door and take some charges. Well, coach, thank you so much for your time. You. Best of luck, we'll see you later. Thank you for being here. Okay, let's move along to the head coach from Shamokin, Chris Zimmerman, come on in here. This is live TV for you. I'm grabbing you from your family over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right, so you are returning AAA champs. What would it mean to your guys to come back get a win here tonight uh, it, it would mean a lot you know Milton's really hot right now they're playing well um, and, and they beat us the last two times uh, one you know forcing a share for the division title and, and then the overall championship so uh, it, it big game district championship but also a chance to you know maybe avenge uh, uh, two defeats earlier what are you gonna take from those two defeats and, and try to correct uh, a lot Milton really outplayed us uh, they were the better team the last two times we played them um, you know, we just need to do a better job all around at playing basketball uh, uh, the way we've been playing um, and hopefully get off to a good start. 
You do have seven losses, but I mean, you, you had a really tough schedule early on. You played some really good teams. Do you think that's really prepared you for this moment? I, I definitely think it has. Uh, our, our guys are battle tested. You know, uh, um, we start four juniors, uh, three seniors play. Uh, they all played in this game last year. Uh, so we have a lot of guys that have a lot of experience, uh, a, a lot of uh, big game experience. And, you know, playing some of those better teams, losses don't hurt you in basketball like they do with football or, or, you know, some other sports if you learn from some of the losses. And I think we definitely have. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck. We'll see you later. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, stick around. We're going to have some stats and highlights from the girls game the first half when we come right back. We are back at Chickalemi High School in Sunbury. Both teams back on the floor. Central Columbia up eight at the half. Bob I, John Mandola, courtside for tonight's action where, as Aaron just said, Shemok and Milton will follow this game. So John, a late 5-0 surge by Central Columbia to end the half has them up eight. As we take a look at some highlights, Central jumped out quickly and then Montoursville came back. Well, you see Central getting the three ball going here as Burton nails that one. She's a three ball specialist. And then you see Kirsten O'Malley taking it to the rack, finishes this one. The offense for Montoursville overall has been a little out of sync. Just haven't been able to get into a rhythm. Only 11 points in a half. So not what coach he wanted. And you see Taylor Knorr here taking this thing in and scoring on that steal and one. So we'll take a quick timeout. We come back. We'll have. The second half here from Shikalemi on my TV, WQMY. We are back and we are getting ready for the second half here on my TV. Steve Jacoby, Tony Dunkelberger, and Corey Hauser, our referees, doing a nice job tonight. Let him play a little bit, John, not over calling it. No, I mean, we didn't get to the bonus with both teams. That's a good way to start. McCracken gets another one. She's got six for the senior. And now it's a 10-point lead for Central Columbia. Yeah, McCracken has uh, been a starter forever here at Central. So it's really having a fine career for the Blue Jays. Trying to get up O'Malley to post up, and she does. She has eight. It just seems like Montoursville's not a half-court team. They want to get out in transition, but the Blue Jays have really stifled that. Yeah and they're trying to get a little pressure here. Martin oh. couldn't, couldn't go. Carl right there gets the roll. Lindsay Carl has eight now. Three buckets and 45 seconds to start as we had a real defensive affair in the first half. Now they're going to start shooting. Look for O'Malley, I think, to take some of this game over. Central's done a nice job on the blocks, cutting out the big girls for Montoursville. Good big step by Hall. Couldn't get it to go. So Central now will just walk it down the court, set up their offense. Well, it's all half court for Central Columbia being patient. <laughs> and as you say that, they force a pass underneath. Turnover's another key for Montoursville in that first half. Several that led to easy baskets. Nice cut to the lane by Hall. A lot of simple buckets being missed. You know, you can't get those buckets back. 10-point lead from Central here. Opportunity to go up 13. Maybe Montoursville pressing a little bit, John. You know, with that experience of Central last, you know, has the experience in that big game. Well, Carl almost got her third. That was a, what going to be a silly foul. She's going after the ball. Two different girls. Luckily for her, nothing happened. Hall again. No good. Coach Heap wanted to travel. Didn't get it. Merton slows it down. Wanted the foul on yeah. Carl as well. Both these teams will move on to PIAA play. While Lusing will meet Mount Carmel for the third place for a chance to go. Mount Carmel, the defending champions. John, what, four times you mentioned the Red Tornadoes won it. <laughs> yeah, for Montoursville, this is all new. Klingerman, a little 
eight footer her first two points for the sophomore now Klingerman's one of those girls that could uh, get do some damage as a sophomore here for this team at Central Columbia really really fast she's one of those four by one girls from that team last year at States O'Malley blocked by Carl big rebound though by Stein and a turnover well, you saw the speed there from Klingerman Again, she's a four by one kid, lightning fast. Uh, good ball movement by the Blue Jays. Looking for that open shot. They get it to McCracken, the left hand, got it. Coach Heath might want to call timeout. That middle has been open all night. High post, middle post, you whatever you want to call it. They have so much respect down low for Carl that they're leaving her open, and it, there's opportunities open up. Man to man by the Blue Jays is tough, and a foul is going to go against Klingerman. Biggest lead of the night for either team is 14. Boy, Montoursville really stifling on the on the offensive side tonight, struggling. The Blue Jays, you know, they only give up 36 points per game this year. They have four losses. No. We'll take a quick timeout here on my TV. We are back, 27-15 now. Hall just took it in, laid it up and in. Her first two points of the night. Carl went out of control, charge! Lindsey Carl picks up her third foul. Kelsey Stein all excited from Montoursville. Plant those feet, and they call it going the other way. You can almost tell she was a little bit out of control. And you're almost in your head like, pass the ball, pass it. You know, you got three fouls. So three on her, Nor has two. They were both picked up in the first half. Carl just plays really aggressive. Pass it back into the game. Had an easy two, but missed it. That one she laid off a little bit. Now a steal for Montoursville, Bob. Marcioni over to O'Malley. Kicked out of bounds. It will stay Montoursville ball. It just seems that the hands are so quick for Central. Montoursville's having a tough time dribbling and passing, which is what you have to do. Well, Coach Burton watches a lot of film. You know, when you beat a team three out of four, there's some stuff you're doing right. Montoursville a heck of a team, but right now Central has figured them out thus far. Down 12, we're going to have to put a surge on now, the Warriors. All two in a row for her. Or have somebody step up like Hall has. I don't know if anybody from Montoursville scored two in a row that quick all night. Very senior team. And there's a foul on O'Malley, kind of pulled on the hand of Noor. That's only her first foul. There you see it. Grab the hand of Knorr. It'll be on the floor. That's just the first foul of the third quarter here for Montoursville, so good for them. Knorr handles it out to McCracken. Foul underneath, right back to Knorr, and she's got two. Four points for the junior, Taylor Knorr. Got to finish some simpletons. You get that one from Knorr, you're keeping it at 12. Saw the Blue Jay in the house. Good representation for both student sections. 
They are packing them in here at Shikalimi. O'Malley will step back, no good. Really has not gotten on track with the outside shot. There's no offensive rhythm right now for Montours. Other than those two, we got out of Hall. Now a quick turnover. Yeah, Nor palmed it. So an opportunity now for the Warriors as Coach Burton looks at the clock. Well, he could be up 20. He's going to have a little bit of nervous energy, but a great man, that's for sure. Steal by Klingerman. Four for the sophomore. Back up to 14-point lead. You talk about acceleration. There was nobody around her as she took that steal. Value around. No one to pass to. Klingerman disrupted that shot by Marciani. She's been the unsung hero so far for Central. Klingerman putting in some quality minutes. Uh, Central's up four. They call timeout. We'll take a quick one here on my TV. So Central called that timeout 106, up 14. And there you see the Montoursville student section. All dressed up. Their team's all trailing. Klingerman drove it all the way in. But Nor put it back. Every time Montoursville hopes for something good to happen, you get a simple play like that. Central just seems to be right there. Now a quick turnover. Composure has been more on Central's side. That was one of the keys that they were worried about tonight coming into this game. Summer Kamaraski, a 5'9 junior, number five, checks in as Carl takes a seat with three fouls and to get a little rest before the fourth quarter begins. Nor in, no foul. These two teams don't have very deep benches. <laughs> little, little plays from Klingerman have been outstanding this quarter for the Blue Jays. Just little catches, little buckets, a steal. She's done a whole bunch. And it just seems like the ball's bouncing Central's way. That too. <laughs> that helps. And a foul out front. That's going to go against Kelsey Stein. Her second foul, team second. Here you see it again. Yep, just got in the grill a little bit. A little too close. So Mantorsville comes out of the zone, back into the man-to-man, the man, trying to pick up some of the passing lanes. The crack in left hand, no good. Four seconds left, still time. No whistle. Half-court shot, O'Malley! Almost got it! Boy, if that went in, this place would have erupted. But it's the Central Columbia Blue Jays. It looks like they're on their way to the District 4 AA title, but Montoursville still has one quarter to get back. We'll be right back on my TV. You're watching a Fox 56 Sports presentation of the Rivalry of the Week on my TV WQMY. Brought to you by McCann School of Business and Technology and Blaze Alexander Dealerships. We are back at Phil Lockoff Gymnasium, Shikalemi High School. Full house here for the girls' double-A championship game. The boys' triple-A will follow Shimokin and Milton. Well, that's a good way to start the quarter. Marissa Hall from downtown. Well, she's been the offensive spark right now for Montoursville, and that, they're down 13, but she has scored, what, the last six yep. points for Montoya. I have her for seven overall, but she's she's missed a couple too. Yep, but she scored the last three buckets that I can remember for the Warriors. Okay, the winner of this game meets the District 2 champion, Holy Redeemer or Dubmore. That's the loser, excuse me. The winner plays the loser of District 2. Another outside shot, no good. The third seed in District 4 will play the winner in Dubmore, Holy Redeemer. The loser of this game will play either North Schuylkill or Minersville. They will be the District 11 champion. So the referees will convene. 
And Dunmore John is leading Holy Redeemer up in District 2, I believe you said, by five. Now it's down to three. But yeah, that's been a, a good game. Whoever loses this game or wins this game is still going to have a tough game. Those two teams are very tough up there in double A. But right here, there's a District 4 championship to still be crowned. Montoursville down 13 now. Inside the folk, McCracken going to be called for a foul. It'll take a lot of fouls to get to the bonus. Just the third team foul in the fourth quarter here. So it's been very little fouls called, which is what you want. But it's been still very good defense with the low scoring output tonight. Hall going the other way. So we'll see what the foul is. It's going to go against Hall on the charge, and that gives us a, a quick chance to hit, send out, out to Aaron Dugan, who's out in the hallway here at Chickalamie. Aaron? That's right, Bob. I'm over here at our interactive tent area with some young fans getting ready for our next game right here on my TV, WQMY. What are your names, guys? Zach Moyer. Rosalyn Kane. Sarah Beaver. Ben Gink. Matthew Bellis. So who are you rooting for? I know who you're rooting for. Smoking. Smoking. All right, well, thanks for coming out tonight. Thanks for spinning the wheel. We got some Twinkies for everybody here from The Last Man on Earth, which premieres this Sunday on Fox. And make sure you come out and check us out at all these live games. You can win prizes. You can even take a selfie. Who wants to take a selfie with me? We have a selfie station over here. What's your name? Rosalind. This is Rosalind. And check this out. We have this at all of our live games. You can actually take a selfie. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, jeez. And then go to my TV, WQMY, on Facebook and share it with all your friends. So much fun here, guys. Twinkies? Who said Twinkies? Who has <laughs> Twinkies? John, did you get a Twinkie? I passed it off. John. Well, we gave everyone a Twinkie here on press row, so they should be well fed. <laughs> Back here, six minutes left in this game. It's been central pretty much from the outset. Montoursville did cut it to three at one point. But then it's been all Central Columbia here in the second half. So a full time now called by Travis Heap from Montoursville. He wants to talk it over. So that gives us a chance to take a quick time out here too as well. And when we come back, we'll see what the coach had to say to his team from Montoursville. Central Columbia girls looking on from the bench. Their team up 13. Montours will call the timeout, John. Let's see what the play is that Travis Heap called. A little step back three, no good by Marciani. She's been a little off tonight on her outside shot. She's had to alter it a few times. I think that goes to the benefit of Central Columbia's quickness that they've shown. And Montours has only scored nine points this quarter, John. They've had 11 in that first, so. O'Malley's still looking for her first basket here in the second half. Boy, the Blue Jays defense has just been remarkable throughout. Nor no good. Fighter underneath going to be a jump ball, and it will remain to the Blue Jays. Uh, Kelsey Stein is a toughie for Montoursville. Watch this here. You see the shot comes up a little short, and then the battle with Stein tries to do a quick twister on her. It was tied up, but Central will have the ball. Well, at some point, Montoursville has got to start fouling, John, because you're not going to stop the clock. They're going to hold the ball as much as possible. They should get a turnover. He got to convert, though, up to O'Malley. And she's going to be fouled. And now it might be against Noor. And if it is, that'll be her third. Well, you get a couple little fouls like that that maybe add up to those seven team fouls. That's what you're hoping for to get to the free throw line so you can have that opportunity down 13. Got to make possessions count, though. Two points or three points, doesn't matter. You need some points to get a little bit closer. Comes down to that possession, John, like you talked about, right? O'Malley way off the mark. Every possession counts, and there's a lost possession right there. Now Montoursville is going to full court press. So much goes into these playoffs, handling the basketball. Deep pass to Klingerman, great hands. <laughs> How'd she do that? It was like a big mitt, like she had stick them on. Did. Oh. 
Carl. No one wanted to step in and take the charge. Lindsey Carl now in double figures. Taylor Knorr called the LeBron James at Central Columbia, according to Coach Burton. She found a way to get the ball over to one of the top scorers in the league. So Lauren O'Malley is in, number 21. She's a freshman. Obviously, I think Chris Kirsten's sister. Gore, easy bucket. Central Columbia fans starting to feel this one. Malian going to be fouled. So 3.30 remaining in this one. And we'll take a quick timeout. It's Central Columbia up 15 when we come back. Kirsten O'Malley will shoot two and try to get Montoursville back in it. We are back at Phil Lockoff Gymnasium. 15-point lead, and here's what Central's done in February, John. Undefeated so far in February. Averaging the you know, upper 40s, but the defense, again, been very good throughout February. They beat East Juniata in the first round, and then while losing Valley the other night by 13. They're getting the job done and, and momentum. You know, you look at that. Look at all those wins that they have put together. You beat a team like Mount Carmel, you know, beat them twice here in February. You know you're a pretty darn good basketball team. Just not their night tonight. No. Very good defense. Holding right now, Montoursville with 22 points. They average coming in 55, 55 per game. But that's nothing new for Central Columbia and the defense. So Kirsten O'Malley goes to the line for the first time tonight. She averages 18 points per game. She only had eight the last time these two met. She is six right now, make that seven. And those free throws, every little point counts when you're, you're down. And it, this might be a, a too big of a deficit to overcome late in the game. Oh, big, there's a turnover. Now what can they do with it? I'd like to see Hall try to get an opportunity. She was on a little bit of a mini streak for the Montoursville this quarter. O'Malley gets in. Her first field goal of the second half. She's into double figures, and the full court press is broken by Central. And they'll pull it right back out. Now you got to think fouls if you're Montoursville. John, at what point do you foul? Carl in, no good. Had two chances, they get it right back. And there's a foul. Yeah, I mean, you're down 12. You know, you still got to get a few more fouls for them to get to the free throw line. It's, it's a tough situation, you know. You know they're going to get some opportunities on the free throw line, but you're in desperation mode right now with two minutes and down a handful of threes just to try to pull a rabbit's hat out. A rabbit out of the hat, that is. So a foul on O'Malley now. It's her second, but more importantly, they're up to five now. Two more for the one on one. There's a quick one, as expected, and that's Stein comes up, her third. So no one really for Montoursville in foul trouble. Next one, which should happen, I think, momentarily, and you go to the line if you're Central Columbia. And a timeout is on the floor, called by Montoursville. Full timeout, and we'll take a quick break. Central Columbia up by 12 now, two minutes and 10 seconds left before they could win the district championship. We'll be right back.
back live. <laughs> Central Columbia fans feeling it. They want a district title. And 12 point lead, 210 remaining. Next foul goes to the free throws. And now things starting to heat up a little bit. between the two student sections. Here come the police to step right in, but on the floor anyway, there's, there's the last foul. And we have a one-on-one -on -one foul now the rest of the night for Central Columbia. So on the line is Hannah Klingerman, John. Very impressed with her play tonight. It was just a sophomore. Well, she has been outstanding. She's so fast, and she's just got so much experience from track that has helped her. And as a sophomore, I'd be excited to see her play some ball next couple of years for the Blue Jays. Outside shot, no good by Marcioni. Did not has not scored, and there's a quick foul again by the sophomore. This time it will be Nor who goes to the line. So Montoursville who is back in the playoffs for the first time since the year 2000. And Nor can't get it to go. Turnovers, and just a tough defense, the difference tonight by, for the Blue Jays. Montours will just turn it over too many times, John. Lack of offensive rhythm has just hurt them, and you mentioned some turnovers as well. But for whatever reason, Montours were not able to get on track and hit the buckets. But Central got some good shots and some good play all around. Coming up on the 92nd mark in this district to four. Double-A girls championship game. Girls still getting on the floor and after it. Exactly 90 seconds left, John. Hard, Overflow crowd coming in. Hard not to be a fan of Klingerman. Sacrificed her body on that steal and trying to tie it up. And uh, the tours will still, again, down a dozen. So another foul and quickly. The, this is going to take a couple minutes to get down to the final seconds because Montours was not going to give up. I think it's there's that fest, isn't it lobster fest or something. Now we're going to have foul fest here for the last minute 25. <laughs> Again, the winner of this game will play the loser from North Schuylkill and Minersville. We'll try to get those scores, and some of those games are going on tonight. So Noor at the line, hits that one. And looking for point number eight, and she gets it for the junior. So eight points for Noor. Carl and Noor have done an excellent job inside against the Montoursville interior. Central Columbia will be rewarded by taking on Holy Redeemer next week. They lose to Dunmore tonight. That's a tough matchup. That's a tough matchup for a team that's in the top 10 of the state. Mm -hmm. But boy, you're, you got to be impressed with what Central's done tonight here against Montoursville. I mean, this is a big win and the, the output of the points. That could be a very good game, John. You've seen Holy Redeemer this year. I have not. That's going to be a that's going to be a question the way they play defense central does. Yeah. Coach Burton does a fantastic job as his girls have stepped up tonight. We'll get the fifth foul here. So that means the win uh, Dunmore will play the district four third seed either Mount Wyalusing or Mount Carmel. And that could be a heck of a game too. So this is McCracken who misses it. She's got five points for, excuse me, six points. Allison McCracken, 5'8", senior. Coming up after this game, we will have the trophy presentation. 
and the awards, the medal awards. Aaron Dugan will interview some of the winners, and then we'll talk to the coach from Montoursville. His team will be headed to the States. Clearman again. Boy, nice job by the sophomore. O'Malley blocked away. So Central Columbia, losers last year, will win the district title and be headed to the state playoffs as the top seed in District 4 get a <laughs> home game next week and they're in District 4. What a motor from Clingerman. Boy, oh boy, <laughs> she's all over. Lauren O'Malley misses, and uh, last 20 seconds running out here, and that should do it. Boy, Mortoresville came in with a valiant effort, but it's been the Central Columbia Blue Jays and their defense who will do it. Central Columbia are your District 4 AA champions. So when we come back, we'll have the trophy presentation here from Shikalemi. Central Columbia wins it 42-25. You're watching a Fox 56 Sports presentation of the Rivalry of the Week on MyTV WQMR. Brought to you by McCann School of Business and Technology and Blaze Alexander Dealerships. Well, we are packed back at a very crowded Bill Lockoff Gymnasium at Shikalemi. The awards being handed out quickly to the champions from Central Columbia. Let's head over to Aaron Dugan now with the winning coach. Aaron? Well, Coach, I just saw you go jump into the student section to thank them for all their support. How proud of you are your team right now? So very proud. Their defense was exceptional. And if I, I talked to you early on and I said, if we controlled the ball and didn't throw it away, I knew our defense would pick up and it was so tough. It looked like Montoursville really didn't get any open areas to breathe. Uh, credit them, they've worked so hard and this is just, we put we made our shirts unfinished business because of our two point loss last year in the district finals. I think we just finished the business. Absolutely, and not just on defense, but so aggressive, even on offense, yeah. running up and down the court, just so much effort. Yes, very much. Taylor Knorr, uh, I call her my point forward. She's my LeBron James. She could guard bigs, she could guard smalls. She could take the ball up to court and certainly take it to the basket. Lindsey Carl underneath, such a power. Allie McCracken, a fire plot. Madeline Merton and Hannah Klingerman. Awesome guard combination. Everything went our way tonight. And they have fun too. They're photobombing you behind you. Oh no, they are they photobombing me. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, Bob. Congratulations to Coach Merton and his Central Columbia Blue Jays team. They are the district champion, John, and they did it with stifling defense and very good shooting. So they'll be headed down to the PIAA playoffs. Yeah, excellent effort for Central tonight. I mean, just everything went their way. montoursville has got a lot to be proud of this year, knocking out Mount Carmel in the semifinals. Hey, it all starts over again. State playoffs, everybody has the same opportunity. Sometimes you see a two seed or a three seed move along, but uh, Montoursville will regroup. I'm sure they'll be fine in the next round. So the crowd coming in and out as uh, the, the fans from the girls game watching the presentation and then we'll file out and as they try to get the Shemokin and Milton fans in, Coach Burton with his assistant coaches who do a nice job. Remarkable, he's six seasons there, John, and uh, three as head coach. Now twice already they're in the district final. 
that tells you that you know he's got a program going in the right way. They always talk about the softball team down there, and for they won the championship last year, the state championship. Yeah. You know, in, they're building a program for basketball as well. Yeah, Coach Burton really proud of his group. And he really has some dynamic players, that's for sure. You can tell as soon as they get the ball, they're ready. The triple threat position, you know, ready to pass or dribble or shoot. You know, it just a lot of the basics. And you see on their shirt, unfinished business. Well, they finished it tonight here at Chickalimi. Keep going down the line. McDaniel, Ellie McDaniel there. Kamaroski who played a little bit. There's Summer getting a medal. We'll see her again just as junior. Over to Hannah Klingerman, just a sophomore, John. See her on the track pretty soon. Yeah, she'll, uh, she'll go right for basketball. And you see Nor there. <laughs> Coach Burton even said it to Aaron and said, here's my LeBron James. <laughs> well, she was all over the place tonight. She finished with uh, eight points. She had picked up three fouls in the first half, and we thought, oh, boy, she went down. Two quick fouls, excuse me, finished with three. But she played tough and then, you know, did a nice job. Aaron's waiting to grab some players after this presentation, and then we'll head to a quick break as we get set for the boys game. And Coach James Merton in front of his student section. And they'll get the plaque now as District 4 girls double A champions. We'll take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll talk to some of the winners from Central Columbia on my TV. Welcome back. I've got some very happy players with me right now. Our two players of the game, Hannah Klingerman and Lindsey Carl. Such big smiles. You must be so proud of your team. Yeah, it's a great thing to win, and we worked really hard for this, and we had unfinished business from last year, so we knew that we weren't going to go down without a fight today, and sure enough, we came out and we did it, so. Tell me about all the things that went right for you out there. Um, well, Maddie made a couple shots early, and then we were able to pass the ball around and break the press, which helped us a lot, and then after that, we just finished and played really, really tough defense. Yeah, really tough. That seems to be the makeup of this team. Super aggressive, really tough. Is that kind of the personality of your team? Yeah, we're really close as a team, and we're really tough, and we push each other at practice and work really hard, so it came out for us well at the end. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to Lindsey Carl. An excellent job tonight underneath. Talk about the inside play, how tough it was down there. Um, I mean, they're the biggest girls we go against all season, and just working with Allie McCracken, we, we made it happen tonight, I guess. <laughs> Tell me about your coach. He's so proud of you guys, so proud of your toughness. What can you say about him? He's been there since seventh grade. He's got our backs for everything, not just basketball. And I mean, he loves the sport as much as he loves us. And we can't thank him enough for this. You're going to be playing Holy Redeemer. What do you know about them? And what are you going to bring to that game? We don't know much, but I'm sure we're going to bring it all we have. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. OK, Bob, back to you. We're going to go to a break, guys.